everybody, it's Max, and welcome to another exciting edition of Magabytes. Uh, this is my full-length podcast that I do I practically every single week, at least once a week, uh, for members of Premium. It's a premium podcast, and we go all the way on this. Unlike Max Bytes in Magabytes, uh, I answer all questions and from my subscribers and from followers, anything I can see that you know, is either of interest to me or it's posted. And um, we try to get to the roots of all problems with some really interesting perspectives. And um, I really try to just, with, with Magabytes, I really just try to engage with all my audience, you know, as a whole, and, and not just be this person who's sort of pontificating and just telling it and like, okay, here's what's going on, blah, 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 bang, bang, bang. And we also try to have some fun and we'll address practically any topic. So, uh, today is premium day. We do this at least once a month, and uh, this podcast is open to everyone. It'll be uploaded later to my YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed on my YouTube channel, feel free to go over there and hit the subscribe button. Uh, make sure you hit it when you when you right now, just if you're listening to it after hours, and uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it. I would appreciate it. And leave a comment. The comments to me are the most important thing. I mean, right? I love it when when I go through the comments. I try to I try to engage respond to everyone, but I can't always do that. Anyway, I'm uh, in studio today with me right here is the illustrious, the fabulous, the fantastic. You all know her. Everybody knows her, you know, Roxy Balboa. Hey, Roxy, are you there? Happy premium day. <laughs> hey, happy premium day to you too. What's going on? Nothing. How was, uh, how was your Easter? It was fabulous. Good. It was really good. It was really, it was really restful and really good. I, I really spaced out. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, yeah, I did. I really, really got away from it all and, uh, and relaxed and, uh, I had a good time. I had a lot of family and a lot of friends and we were just chilling out and having a lot of great conversations and some debates and, uh, <laughs> really so, yeah, well, you know, very little politics, actually. I, I didn't really do much of any, I, I don't remember any political conversations coming up, honestly. Well, that's it was good. all just like, yeah, I mean, it was just all kinds of little things that, you know, and you tip people, I guess people typically talk about, and a lot of movies and, and stuff like that, and, and talking about the decline and fall of Hollywood, which <laughs> is long since gone, and yeah. stuff like that. You know, it wasn't really, but it was pretty good. How was yours? It was very good, uh, similar to yours, you know, and then there's always the, uh, the, um, the movies that they play, you know, I, I personally like to watch Passion of the Christ, you know, on, on Easter. I think that's a, that's a good movie. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, uh, it's a wonderful day to celebrate that Christ has risen and mm -hmm. that we have eternal life with him. So it's, it's one of my favorite holidays, actually. Yeah, um, we call it, I don't know about you, we call it Resurrection Day. I, I know Resurrection people, Sunday, yeah. Yeah, Resurrection Sunday, that's what we formally call it. And this time of the year, you know, usually it doesn't always coincide with Passover. So it, it, it right. fell really close to Passover this year, just a few days off. And so, which was actually the date that Christ was crucified. And uh, three days later on First Fruits, Nisan 17 is when he rose from the dead, but um, which happened to be equivalent on our calendar to a Sunday morning. Um, but uh, that's where Easter Sunday, the tradition uh, stems from. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's definitely, I, I always say, like, I always consider Easter like the end of the, of the holiday season. I don't know. It may yeah. sound corny to people, but that's how I view it. I kind of look at it like a four month wind, four month arc that begins with, I mean, four to five months, I guess that begins with Thanksgiving and ends with Easter. You know, I kind of yeah. look at this whole period, like a whole quarter uh, is uh, is just a bunch of holidays. It's bookend because now we look at the spring and summer and, you know, all of that. And um, actually, we're in spring, right? So it's be the summer, we're heading towards summer. And then, you know, you have your ordinary secular holidays and everything. But you know, I don't. Yeah. That's, that's By the way, that so. that Nissan Seventeen post that you that you made was yeah. fantastic. I mean, guys, oh, you. if you haven't if you haven't seen it, try to scroll back up and and find it. It was uh, it was very. I've I've never read anything like that before. So. 
Thank you. I, I wrote that. Yeah, that's on uh, the Fortress, on Fortress Maximus. For so premium members, if you haven't seen it, it's from late last week. You can scroll up and you can read it. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I put that one together uh, early last week. A lot of, you know, I always have like, I'm always working on like three or four articles at one time or uh, mini articles, I guess you can say in some cases. And I was working on that one early last week. I figured it would, I wanted to do something uh, for the holiday. And so I wanted to point in the fact that Passover was, like I said, happening simultaneously. I wanted everybody to kind of like, okay, did you don't forget the, the, the Hebraic side uh, of this, of this, this, uh, this holiday season. And so I went into that and I talked about the Jewish calendar and everything, but yeah, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. And, um, you know, yeah. and, another yeah. one of the perks about being on premium is that you get, you get these like little gems in between all his other jewels. <laughs> it's just a treasure, treasure box of, uh, oh, of, uh, of gold. Like I like to get the gems in among, amongst the jewels. I, I like that. That's really that's really quaint. That's cute. I really that's that's just a nice way of putting it. <clears throat> well, that's what that's what it is over there on premium. So you guys really have to uh, come hang out with us over there. It's there's all, a whole bunch of stuff for everybody. I mean, it's not just history. It's, uh, you know, Max puts up these little pieces on, I don't want to say religion per se, but, um, you know, like biblical, um, biblical stories and just like, you know, stuff that you never really, you don't really hear anywhere else. So it's, it's, it's a full package for everybody who loves history, everybody that, you know, wants to learn about the Bible. It's a little something for everybody. Yeah, I, I, I. I have a lot of different, see, I'm, I like, I have headings for subheadings for every kind of column I do. I have multiple columns that I write yeah. and, you know, the main one is the renegade, of course, that's sort of like your human interest, but, um, I keep everything categorized in different areas. So if it's like, yeah, if you like history, if you like, um, if you're into like, uh, of course, civics history, if you're into religious studies, if you're into, uh, just, you know, uh, whatever. But of course, predominantly everything's politically, uh, based. So it's every, I tie everything into politics. So it is really, it's like being in class 24 seven, which is, you know, how I often like it to is. put it. Yeah, it is. It really is. And if I mean, you have any, and if you have any questions, stuff. if there's any questions on anything, just, you know, drop it in the room and then you go back and answer them. So it's like you have your, teacher at your you know disposal to ask him any questions or clarify anything yeah that's a good way of uh, of of also saying it because the the fact is that when, like for instance when i get done here this afternoon i'm going to be in the garage and an unchained i will be an unchained because it is premium day so i'm going to answer some questions that are there so if you have questions now's the time to post it i know we have a big crowd here today so drop the questions in unchained or in uh in the garage on the premium chat and i will uh try to address it while we're live but um i'll be in the garage later on definitely uh later this afternoon uh, answering questions i have a backload of questions from friday so i have to go through it so you know it, it's uh i'll be there for about an hour or two so if you want to after this if you want to engage definitely join premium because i will be one-on-one -on -one, or i should say you know um a few I mean, a few of it, a bunch of, of, of a bunch on one, <laughs> a bunch of MPs on one, join premium and contact Roxy, shoot her an email, Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com, because we're running a special this month, aren't we? We sure are. Yeah. And you don't have to just email me. You could DM me too, if that's easier for you. So it's at Roxy underscore Balboa. And we are running a special for this month for $12 your first month for premium, which is an exceptional deal. I mean, you get everything, you get full access to everything, which is the Magabytes, the different columns, the newsletter. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing restricted um, with the discounted wow. price. So that's, I know. And really with good. everything heating up, with everything heating up, it's like th this is the this is the, the cool place to be. I mean, if you're in high school, this is the cool spot to hang out in Max's garage. That's you're, true. You're, all, you're with all the other cool kids <laughs> and the coolest teacher on campus. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, that's actually a smoking deal. So definitely contact Roxy about that. Again, it's at Roxy the underscore Balboa, or you can email her at Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com and just ask her for the details on it and you can sign up. A lot of people t are taking advantage of it. So that's the this month's special and uh, you can join us and it you'll unlock You'll unlock all my articles and you can have a lot of fun kind of like digging in and, and sifting through it. So what is on the agenda today? What do we have today? Um, we got a lot of questions, actually. And guys, that. 
Yeah. And if you haven't submitted the questions beforehand, like Max said, just feel free to drop them in on Chained or the garage and we'll pick them up and, and ask them live here. So uh, kicking, kicking off, can Congress intervene with decisions concerning China that Biden either is or isn't making? Well, um, yes, if they have a super majority. Uh, Congress can is a legislative branch. That's the most powerful branch in, in government is is in its when it's taken as as a whole. That's the Senate and the House. That's the most powerful branch of government. It's Article One of the Constitution, and I always like to say that's probably why it's placed first is because it's order of importance. Article two is the executive and Article three is the judiciary. So, yeah, Congress can, if it has a supermajority, can, can just legislate all they want and make things. They can make laws and they can bypass the president. Uh, the powers of Congress are limited as far as there's a checks and balances in our republic. Um, and there are constitutional uh, provisions in place that limit what it can and cannot do in regards to uh, its relation with the states. But it can bypass the president with two thirds supermajority. So it can override vetoes and make laws and force them through. I think the last presidential veto to be overridden was uh, when President Trump was leaving office was uh, when he vetoed uh, one of the budgets. Um, but, you know. There, are they going to do that? Probably not. They don't have the Republicans don't have the votes. So they barely have a majority in the House. They're up 35 seats from 2020, but they barely have a majority in the House. And uh, they need like 280 votes plus they need 67 senators. Now, there are things that they can do. They can subpoena all executive officials and bring them in for grilling, put them under oath and have them attest to things. Um, but that just takes, that takes time to, and you're essentially just trying to bully people using um, the powers of the subpoena. So, I, I mean, I don't really see them, the president has tremendous latitude legally and constitutionally to, uh, in foreign policy, the, the founders enshrine that in the constitution and Congress has enhanced that over the last hundred years. So I don't really see them interfering. I mean, that's why it's so important to have the right person as president. Because, you know, he has his fingers on the nuclear codes. Democrats are famous for saying that. And it's there's truth in that. There is truth in that. I think the one time, one of the most infamous times, not one time, but one of the most infamous times Congress tried to limit the powers of the president uh, was with the War Powers Act in the 1970s, um, which has never been um, has never been adjudicated by the U.S. Supreme Court. And a lot of scholars believe is unconstitutional anyways, is to try to limit the powers of the president, um, depending on you know, how, how often he, because he, he, I don't, I don't remember the specifications of the law, but it, it's basically limits him as how long he can have troops in combat without going to Congress. And uh, the president can't declare war, but he is commander in chief of the armed forces. So there is that balance there. Congress can is the only body that can declare war, but they haven't done that since World War II. So if, if Congress continuously feels like Biden isn't mentally capable of, you know, handling China and, you know, some other serious issues that we're having, or they feel like he's not addressing them in the way they need to, is that is that when articles of impeachment start to be introduced? Yeah, well, so if if the um, president is um, if the president is is incapable of executing the office of under the 25th Amendment, uh, you have to you, typically you have to get his full cabinet unanimously has to agree that there's something wrong there. And then or you need um, a, a majority of of Congress to actually initiate that. Uh, typically at least in conventional sense, you'd have both in agreement. So you wouldn't want to take it unilateral action because, I mean, a member the, the cabinet could stage a coup in, in theory. So you'd, you'd want to um, bring in uh, the, um, the House. I just don't see that as ever happening. It's never happened before. Article 25 has been invoked twice by the Bushes when they've gone in for surgery. I think that was the only time it's ever been invoked. And that was uh, by the president himself. And then he... Uh, he um, uh, retracted his uh, his temporary transfer powers to the vice president uh, when he woke up from the anesthesia. So uh, I believe it was both Bushes. Uh, I don't know if it happened for Ray. I don't think what Reagan had ever happened, even though even when he was shot. So you know, it, it's um, 
Yeah, I mean, theoretically, but man, you're you're going into areas we've just never tested before. So, you know, I mean, we're kind of like up Ship's Creek. Uh, I hate to say it, but um, I don't think anyone is, unless there's serious serious concern for for a major devastation to take place that's going to wipe out like if there was like we were at the verge of literally at the, of nuclear war i don't see anyone 25th amending amendment amendmenting I'm, I'm trying to even create a word there it's not even a word but i'm trying to make one up i tried making up a new word guys what do you want um i don't i just don't see anyone really doing that uh it would have to be extraordinary circumstances so you're saying we're stuck with Biden pretty much until the end of his term? Well, you can always, I mean, what I'm saying is you can always, like you brought up impeachment. Now, you, can, you can't impeach the president except for high crimes and misdemeanor, uh, misdemeanors. Being incompetent is a political issue. That's not a, a constitutional issue. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? To you? It's, not, yes. it's not a legal yeah. issue. Right. So, you know, it's, it's like you don't like the president, vote against him. Gets, get him out of office. But you, but just because you don't agree with what he's doing or you think he's incompetent, that's not grounds for impeachment. No, they, right. they, you, can, you can't impeach Biden because he's senile. That make That's not constitutional. If mm -hmm. you start going, if, if people start abusing the Constitution, you can't. You just can't. This, this is high crimes and misdemeanors, so you just can't anyway. So you'll never get a, get that through Congress, even if you had 400 Republicans in there. Um, and then that's a slippery slope to dictatorship because then what they're going to do the next if they're out of power, the Democrats will do it to the Republicans. So you don't want to go down that route. Right. Uh, no, the the uh, the thing you have to look at is the Twenty Fifth Amendment. Um, but I don't think I think they're going to they're going to insulate him. Uh, I don't think that's ever going to uh, that's going to come into play. We're, we're like we're very close to uh, the twenty twenty four elections anyway. So I think a lot of people like me are going to be putting a lot on just voting him out, and so we don't have to face this issue. Mm. Okay, and that's what we're gearing up for on premium too, is to learn about, you know, strategic ways of voting and things like that. So to help to help rally the troops for twenty twenty four. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And uh, and don't forget something about the 25th Amendment. You also need the vice president to agree with 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 because he's uh, she is part of that uh, that cabinet that have to agree with removing um, with removing the current president. Yeah. And that's highly unlikely yeah exactly so okay so, yeah, so, so for premium yeah for premium we're going to we're gearing up for this for this we'll be going through uh all of this the 24 election uh we'll be talking about strategies we're going to be covering practically every major race we'll be covering all the states and the presidential races we'll be i'll be looking a lot at the senate because we have to flip the senate next year and it looks very good for the republicans in that it's even looking good in arizona which is amazing um and i've been talking a lot about that on premium uh it's looking really the senate race i mean the senate race is looking good in arizona for republicans because of the way things are turning out with the split in the democrat vote they're splitting into two parties so that's very interesting uh mm -hmm. so we'll see how that all plays out though it's still early but um anyway what else do we have what states do you think youngkin would help um or help being strong in if he were the vp would it be the same states as desantis yeah, they, there's a lot of overlap between the two of them. So I would say he would help out, of course, right off the bat in Virginia, which is a must win for 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 Trump next year. Um, you know, I don't really there's, there. There are other paths, but that is like one of the easiest ways to get reelected is to flip Virginia in an upset, which is very doable uh, because Virginia is one of the Democrat states that are continually trending to the right. It's going back into the to the Republican column. Um. I would say Virginia, he'll help in Georgia significantly. Um, so would DeSantis. Uh, and then I think Youngkin would actually help in Arizona. He may actually help out in uh, in Nevada. So he plays along the same lines as DeSantis. He's not of much help in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, stuff like that. He, he's not, none of the, none of those guys are going to help out much up there. Do you think that would be one of Trump's strategies to choose his VP would be to help pick up those states that, you know, he typically has trouble carrying? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what everyone has to understand. If you go back in time, uh, the vice presidential selection was important during the late 20th century to carry a state. So, you know, Reagan had Bush to help him with Texas. Not that he really needed help. 
in, in, in the South, but he did need help in the South. Like Reagan didn't carry Georgia, for instance, of course, because that was Jimmy Carter's state. So, you know, uh, picking Bush secured Texas, which basically the strategy, because Reagan at first did not anticipate a, a landslide victory. So the Reagan, the Reagan team went in looking at this was going to be a fight. In, 19, in, in early 1980, that's how they were looking at it. This was going to be a big fight between Carter, President Carter, and Governor Reagan. And it, it turned out to be a blowout. But the, the strategy was Bush was going to carry uh, Texas for Reagan. Um, also, picking Bush was picking a member of the establishment, which shored up support for Reagan with the establishment because he didn't want the establishment nipping at his heels um, because they didn't like him. So that was that's another problem where, where Trump had in his first term and, and where he continues to struggle is he doesn't have any establishment friends except for people like Lindsey Graham. And they're kind of like, you know, so, you know, it, it's uh, it, it Reagan made sure he made friends with the establishment because he was a he was a rogue. If you look at 1992, Clinton did similar with Gore picking Gore, who was an established senator in Washington and was from Tennessee, helped secure another Southern they, two Southerners on the Democrat ticket in 1992 helped to cut into the Republican stronghold of the South. And that's why Clinton got elected. Uh, besides, he was able to flip uh, and unbuckle, I should say, at that time. That's how they used to put it, California. Um, so essentially, he took apart the Reagan coalition, which Bush re was relying on. And, and that cost Bush the election. But of course, the real problem in that election was Ross Perot, because Ross Perot siphoned all those votes away uh, in those critical states. But the strategy for Clinton's group was to cut into the deep South. That's why they had a whole Southern team working with them. If you can't, and that's what the Democrats are sort of relying on now, because if you take away, it, the Republicans still hold on to the South. But if they, if you take away from them, Virginia, which is the only Southern state they really have a foothold in, us, uh, and you take back Georgia, which should flip back. Uh, seeing, considering the fact that the Republicans dominate everything there, uh, but you know, once you once you flip those two back, oh, look at what I posted today from Premium. I posted it on my Forever channel. Was one of my new maps, and suddenly all these different avenues open up for President Trump to get reelected, and and it's Biden who's who has to run the tables because you know, and I'm talking without Arizona, you know, I mean with with if you look, just th remember. Trump comes in to he's going to start election night. No doubt about it in my mind. He's going to start election night with 235 electoral votes banked. That's up from 232 because of redistricting and because of the electoral count um, reallocation after the census. So the census was in our favor. I know some people said it wasn't, but it was because the math is just there. And so it's 235. He needs 35 more. All right. OK, so you flip Georgia. Right. That's like I think I think Georgia's still I don't know if it's 14 or 15. I don't know if it went down any. I think it's 15. And then you have Virginia. That's 28. So you need seven more electoral votes. OK, you have to flip back. I believe you can flip back Nebraska District 2, uh, which went for Biden. Um, I think Trump carried it. And I know Trump carried it in 2016. I think he can flip that back. Uh, he flips that back. Now he needs six more electoral votes. And you just, where do you get those six other electoral votes? You kind of shop around. You got Nevada. Um, actually, he needs about five. You got Nevada. You can pick off um, Wisconsin. You can pick off Arizona. I mean, essentially, the Democrats at that point have to win everything. They can't lose one more state. So they have to run the tables. So I'm not even looking at Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota. I don't even look at those states, New Hampshire. I just ignore them completely. And I'm just looking at, okay, what's the easiest way for Trump to get reelected? And that's what I keep telling the Trump campaign whenever I message them something or send something to him here. Here's my thoughts on the process. Dig in in Virginia and Georgia and then work yourself out from there. Head over to Arizona and Nevada. That's really it. And then Wisconsin. And then I would just kind of that's your playing field right there. And if you can get half of those states, you're back in the White House. But there's, there's no way because you're not going to lose Ohio or Florida or Iowa or any of those states. Those are firmly in, in Trump's cut in Texas. You know, I mean, those are all locks. The rest of the southern states are all locks for Trump. I mean, he's never going to lose those. So you're not even there. You have to just flip some states that are all those are the old Bush states, by the way. Don't forget, those are the old Republican states like Georgia, you know, we're talking Arizona, uh, Nevada, stuff like that, you know. So what about Anyways, 
I just want to say, anyways, guys, this is uh, Magabytes, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. This is what we do every week over at Maximus Premium. So if you want to join Maximus Premium, get in on it. Um, we're running a special this month for $12. Contact Roxy. It's at Roxy underscore Balboa. I had Telegram and Twitter. You can also email her at Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com. Uh, she loves getting inundated with messages. So fill up her inbox and, and say hi. <laughs> I live for it. I know she lives for it. She's got two phones, one by one ear, one by the other. So you just join sometimes she's just like she's she dual texts, you know, so it, it's it's pretty cool. But anyways, I even text with um, my feet if I have to. I mean, that's it. You've got to get her two more phones, one for each foot. So there she, there she goes. <laughs> so with that so, being said, what do you think about Lake for VP? Because you mentioned about, you know, digging in in Arizona. I love Carrie Lake. I think she's fantastic. She's a very sweet, very personable individual to talk to. Uh, she's everything you see on camera. Um, I think she's a wonderful, she's very, she's hyper intelligent. Um, but I think. She follows you, doesn't she? Yeah, she follows me. Uh, and, she, um, and she engages with your tweets. Yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty chill. She's a pretty chill person. Um, the only thing is, like with her, it, I, I don't. I don't. First of all, know if she ever, you know, wants to be vice president. And I don't think Trump's going to be looking in that direction. Um, I think with her. Uh, in something, I think she if she hears this, if she's, if she listens to this broadcast, you, she really needs to uh, have a backup plan. I know she does, but she really needs to have a backup plan because, let's face it, the Arizona race is, you know, I mean, the, for governor, that's that's kind of gone. Um, I don't want to get people disappointed, but let's just be practical about it. Look ahead. Your backup plan, Arizona Senate race, because the Democrats are going to self, they're going to, they're self-destructing in that. They're going to tear themselves apart to get rid of cinema. And she's not going to leave. Like she's running as an independent. So they're going to literally, the Democrats are running against the Democrats next year in Arizona. And they're going to tear themselves apart. The GOP just has to sit it out and literally cruise to victory in a three-way race because that's what it's all in it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen it's going to be a three-way race and she could easily win with like 42 43 percent of the vote in a three-way race and become the next senator um because cinema i think cinema's angry so angry at the democratic party she would rather throw the race and destroy them there they, they, these those two they, they're at each other's throat in that state that's one state where the Democrats are going to blow it and they, they're really going to blow it next year, I think. So, you know, I think for vice president, um, I, I would totally be behind it if he picked her, but I think really he's going to have to look for someone who's an established governor from an estate that he needs to carry. And, you know, I think, uh, I, I just look at, you know, me, I'm, I'm always going to Santis. I added Youngkin as an, another possibility. Um, I, Christy Nome. Uh, is another possible. The reason I mentioned Christy Nome is because, well, first of all, she's a very established two term now. She's in her second term, won a landslide reelection last year, a uh, governor. She's very popular in the Midwest. She's an evangelical, you know. I think she's going to play real, I think she'd be a big help in Virginia, a big help in Georgia. And a very big help in Western Pennsylvania, rural Pennsylvania. I think she would be a big help there. Where I'm not putting a lot of like emphasis on Pennsylvania, but she would be a she would she would play really well there, and in other areas, any rural enclaves, uh, or in some of those more uh, those toss up states, that's where she would come in very handy. She's a bona fide conservative too. So there's a, there's another person to look at, um, and you know. She would be like, uh, I think she's sort of like, uh, she's not like Sarah Palin, which I, I like Sarah Palin as a person, but you know, she, this Christie's really a genuine, like established conservative governor who likes what she's doing. So I think she's a professional. Yeah, that's another possibility. If you, whoever, what, what do you, who do you think? I'm just going to throw that out to everyone because I'm open for suggestions. So if you got a favorite, pitch them out by all means. I'm not close minded on this. I keep expanding the bench as far as I'm concerned. If you got a name, toss it out there and I'll tell you what I think. Well, actually, now that you say that, a lot of people have been questioning or wanting to know what your thoughts are on this new guy, uh, Vivek, what is it, Ramswamy? Um, Ram Swamp, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're very impressed with a lot of the stuff that he has to say, but they just don't know if he has the name recognition to pull it off. Yeah, well, I think it's great 
to have i did I, i've listened to him like twice and he's very smart he's very conservative i don't know where he is on social issues yet so i'd have to check on that and that you may go oh social issues max you know but i'm like no it's going to be important in states because the only reason the republicans have a shot in virginia is because of social issues let's face facts that's why youngkin got elected um the same thing in georgia that's a big thing in georgia you're going to need a social conservative uh, you know, so th those that's important for for you know. I mean, if you want if you want to win Pennsylvania, you're going to have to get all the Amish to the polls, and social issues are a way to get them to the polls. So I'm just going to put that out there for people to remember about social issues. But you know, it, it's like, and how do you say his last name again? You got it. The first, you got it right when you said it. I, how do you say it? Ramswamy. Ramswamy, yeah. I think, you know, it'd be great to have someone like him, but, you know, I don't know if having, like, I still think you, it, it's so, it's such a, it's on a in, a, in a historical sense and in a practical sense, it's so important to have, like, an established, uh, it's an established, you know, vice presidential candidate who's from a state and carries a state. And I don't know if Ramswamy actually does that. And, and, you know, it's, it's, he's kind of, he doesn't have that name recognition and that pull. I don't want to play it down. I think he is auditioning for a position in, in the, in the Republican administration, you know, but, um, we'd have to wait and see. So, so let's wait until the debates. I think there'll be second tier debates. I don't know if Trump will participate in them or not, but everybody running for president now, except for Trump is auditioning for vice president. If you want my personal opinion. So, all right, let's um, let's move out of politics a little bit um, and go into the military. Um, so there's re there's reports that seem to be someone in the military who's leaking classified documents, um, detailing American national security, secrets on Ukraine, the Middle East, and China. What are your thoughts on about that? About what's happening? Well, I'll tell you, whoever's uh, whoever's doing that isn't really helping the uh, the F the war effort. That's not to say that. You know, you're supposed to support the war, but somebody's leaking that information um, that could actually, I mean, jeopardize the conflict. Look, I don't have a this is what you got to understand. You have two groups that are not friends of the United States. You have uh, really if you really well, I hate I'm not going to you know, I don't really want to go into this because I just don't want to go. I'm just not going to go into this. But essentially, someone has to has to push. Uh, the Russians and the Ukrainians to sit down at the table and and fix this. I think Donald Trump would definitely do that. Um, these guys have got to knock this off because they're. I'm more concerned about the war escalating and spilling over into other areas. The last thing you want is for Poland to be hit because then we are in World War III. So if I wake up some morning and everybody's screaming in my rooms and saying that the Russians just bombed Poland or something happened in Poland, I'll, now World War III started. OK, so and because Poland's a member of NATO, Poland is going to invoke Article 5. It'll bring in every country that's a part of NATO, including the United States and Canada, into a major conflict with the Russians. Um, and the Poles will not they will not go through this again. They've been through this. Uh, they've been through occupation twice in the 20th century, first by the Nazis and then by the Soviets. They're not going to go through it again. And I've worked a, a long time with 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 uh, Polish immigrants. And I can tell you that. Uh, they're double tough and and they love the West. And so that's what I'm more concerned about than anything. I don't want to see this thing um, expand into other theaters and, and this to become. So somebody's got to get these two sides to the table and, and just work this out. And 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 both sides are going to not be 100 percent happy with the outcome. So, you know, that having said that, whoever's leaking this information uh, is is just doing it for for you know, filthy lucre, frank, frankly. So they're just doing it for money, obviously. And um, I don't think that that is, uh, um, like this, I don't think that that's uh, germane to, uh, I, actually, I should say, I don't think that's beneficial to the West at all because, but anyway, that's my that's my only opinion on that subject. That's sad. Um, so we have a question with Raj or asking if she can help carry some of the never Trump women. So I don't know if that's in regards to Gnome or Lake because we were discussing both of them. But either or, do you think that they could help carry some of the never Trump women? Um, well, I think any I, I, I don't want to say that, you know, I don't know if just having a, 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 a woman as your vice presidential nominee is enough to carry, you know, someone who's politically you know, decided against Trump. Um, I, do, I do think that, 
it definitely adds a part of diversity to the to the ticket. And um, but I think w- with regards to you know, uh, let's. I, I really, I, I have to say, I don't think Lake would because Lake is considered, you know, very far right wing, and she is. And you know, I don't see um, her necessarily uh, carrying Never Trumpers. Never Trumpers are an ideological group that just hate Trump. They don't. They they can't even articulate the reason they hate Trump. So I mean I don't see moving them at all. They've been at, they've been against Trump since ni- since uh, nineteen since twenty sixteen. Okay, he specified he was talking about Noam. Noam, uh, maybe a little. You know, she'd be in a better position, yeah, because she's she may be considered unfairly part of the establishment, whatever the establishment is. I don't even know. I'm not even clear what the establishment is anymore because I've seen people actually start saying that Trump's part of the establishment for one thing or another. I've, I've seen people, essentially you become part of the establishment whenever you're successful. So if you, you know, that's, that's what a lot of people, st- I mean, some people, not a lot of people, some people actually start doing. So I wouldn't, I mean, I consider her a very conservative governor and, you know, very, you know, I mean, that's, she's just a great governor. I don't ever really know problems with you may there's no perfect politician you can always find one or two or three things that they did that you don't agree oh, with sure yeah. you know i mean it's just a fact of life guys so you know but yeah i mean she may be able to help let's move a couple of the softer never trumpers uh, some of them are going to come home no matter what because of a combination of factors um you know one of the biggest things is this they're going to be looking at a senile you know, guy in the White House that's 82, 83 years old. He's extremely old. He's up there and, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't even know where he is half the time. So are you going to vote for that and and possibly push the world to the brink of, of a nuclear holocaust? I hate to say that, but, you know, there are people that are afraid of that. Um, or are you going to vote for Trump? And I think the, you know, you could, if you don't, even if you don't like Trump, you're going to have to make that decision. Oh, I may sit it out and not vote. Well, did you vote in 2020? Probably not. So then did you vote in 2016? Probably not. So then you're not really a factor. But, and a lot of them are like that. Or they may vote third party. Well, I mean, now that Biden has, you know, he selected the first woman vice president, do you think it'd be beneficial for Trump to do the same thing? I mean, I would consider it. I I, I think that's, if you have a, 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 uh, a, a woman out there in an elected office. Uh, I always look for a governor. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I have no problem with that. But I don't look at you know persons' genders when I decide you know what they're what well, I'm going to select them for. You I don't, don't think Trump. Well, I'm just a saying, lot of people do. But I, I'm just saying if I'm putting myself as an if I was an advisor to Donald Trump. You know, so I would basically be that that's that's something that I would consider because I think one of the things about Trump is he's just got a very um, kind of like neutral way of looking at you know, both gender neutral and 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 racially neutral way of looking at, you know, people for positions. And, and that's I mean, people may disagree with that. I don't know. But I wouldn't necessarily suggest that he goes in there for that. First, um, I would be looking at some look. You guys know this. I'm going to say it again. Out of everybody out there, the one person who would be an ideal vice president on Trump's ticket is Ron DeSantis, period. You may not like hearing that, but it's a fact. And I'm not a huge DeSantis fan, but I um, I would certainly vote for him if Trump wasn't running for president. And he was. I would have no problem doing that. And he would just checks all the boxes. But he, more than that, he actually is can get i think he can get i think i don't know if he can win elections yet outside of florida you have that has to be seen but he could definitely energize uh republicans and i think he would bring in a lot of the establishment he's already got a lot of the establishment working with him which brings me back to the 1980 model you know reagan was the renegade and he went into that election uh basically he destroyed bush in in the primary and those two guys hated each other and then he won the nomination and he hadn't even picked his vice president yet. And it was after he secured the nomination that he chose his vice president. And he fo- he made a phone call to George H.W. Bush. And the, the rumors were that George H.W. Bush, upon hearing that that Ronald Reagan was Governor Reagan was on the phone for him, ran downstairs from his office upstairs at his campaign headquarters and grabbed the phone because he knew what he was calling for. And he took that real quick and he buried the hatchet real fast because he knew he could ride Reagan's coattails, coattails into the White House. 
And that's exactly what he did. And that's how we ended up with a Bush dynasty. And, you know, for better or for worse, but it was a very shrewd move on Reagan's part because it ended any hostilities from the establishment. Because if you look at Reagan's administration, it was made up by a groups of different factions. There were all kinds of people in there uh, from the Crystals and the Bill Crystals and the Irving Crystal, his father, of course, who was the godfather of neoconservatism, to Pat Buchanan, who's a paleoconservative. I mean, it was everybody was in the Reagan administration. They all made their names during it. And, and that's what Reagan did. He brought coalitions together to do what? To become the dominant political force through the 1980s in Washington. And it was brilliant. Trump challenges the establishment. And essentially what you end up doing is you end up fighting the Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> and that's hard to do. So, you know, it's like it's at this point, I just want to let's let's bury the hatchet in some areas and let's win and let's eradicate uh, what we've got there, which is essentially a, a guy going to lead this could lead this world to uh, a third world war. It, you know, if it's not too late to stop them. So, I mean, and, you know, that's how I view it anyways. Doesn't mean you have to sacrifice any principles, guys. Doesn't mean you right. have to do that at all. Doesn't mean that at all. Look, however you look at it, the questions should always be, is he pro-life? Is he, is he, uh, is he pro-gun? Is he pro-Second Amendment? Um, has he proven this in some way? Is he effective? Is he an organizer? Is he intelligent? You know, um, you just got to start going down that list. And if he checks those boxes and or she checks those boxes, yeah, and, and, and they motivate people, let's do it. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Rebecca Rebecca's asking on chain. Hey, Max, uh, what about Carrie Lake for VP? And Rebecca, we actually just covered this right before you probably tuned in, but uh, you want to give a really quick rundown again on your Carrie Lake thoughts? Well, just really quick. I think Carrie Lake is a wonderful and splendid individual. Um, I, out of all of the races in 2022, that was the one race that I really felt bad that we lost, quote unquote. Um, you know, I think if she had pulled that off and if she maybe, maybe she may, maybe she'll win a, uh, the court, the final court decision. I hope she does. But if she uh, pulled that off, I would have felt like we won the presidency. I think a lot of people yeah. would, have, would have considered 2022 like the greatest year since 2016. Yeah. I think that's how important her, her, that, that race was. I think a lot of people were hoping on that so much. And so I, I mean, I certainly would support her for the VP. But I don't think Trump's going to look in that direction. Um, no, I, I think that she should consider running for the Senate next year. I think she has a much better shot. People will think, no, no way on earth. No, no I'm not saying on a one-on-one -on -one race. I'm saying in, in and I'm saying in, on in a three-way race. I think she has a really good shot at, at any Republican does. Frankly, Ducey could probably win that uh, race if he if he tried. So um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Okay, so let's go. Let's talk about voting rules. States are now mm -hmm. allowing you to put anything down besides male or female uh, when it comes to gender. But doesn't the Constitution only allow voting for men and women? And would this be a loophole? Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to go into this. <laughs> This is well. I'll just say this: um, the uh, the Constitution doesn't uh, doesn't speci doesn't specifically address gender. That's all I'm going to say on that. So I'm going to avoid that one. Uh, let's move on to the next one. And guys, okay. everybody, um, yeah, let's and and let's yeah, let's just move on to the next one. Um, everybody, this is Magabytes. This is my full length podcast, and I do this exclusively for members of Premium. This one's going to be actually is open to everyone today because today is Premium Day. And uh, so you can join this month. You can, we do premium day at least once a month, but you can join this month of special uh, for $12. Uh, contact Roxy, Roxy Balboa, the number one at gmail.com. And you can also DM her at Roxy uh, Bal uh, underscore Balboa. And that's on Twitter and Telegram. And uh, let her know you want to join. Absolutely. And this is this is a smoking deal for you guys if you want to get in on it for the first month because it is packed full, jam packed full of information and analysis. And it's not only just Matt giving all his wonderful insight, it's also um, everybody that's in the garage. You know, I mean, it's like it's full of just people who love our country, like minded patriots, and there's really great conversations in there too. And, you know, you could just like hang out with everybody in there and, and talk about things and put your 
perspective in there and max gets involved in the conversations too so it's really just like hanging out in max's garage with a bunch of cool people just discussing life it's very it, it is it is it is it, you know so anyways okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Let's uh, let's talk about Taiwan. Do you have an update on Taiwan? Because according to Sebastian Gorka, the island has been surrounded under the guise of military exercises. Yeah. Well, the they they've concluded. Uh, that's a uh, they concluded yesterday. So the the, this, the island is no longer surrounded right now. Uh, those are just military um, exercises and. I wasn't so concerned about that. I'm more interested in the um, uh, the uh, blockade, the soft blockade that they're actually running long term. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but uh, they did not. Um, they did not, uh, of course, invade the country. I I don't see, frankly. I, I said this many times. I'm, I'm not saying I don't see it. It's possible. But if the Chinese actually. Uh, do an invasion of Taiwan. It'll make Russia's invasion of Ukraine look like a brilliant military strategy. Uh, it's it's going to be bloody. It's going to be uh, long. It's not going to achieve its goals. It's going to devastate the Chinese economy and the Chinese military. They simply, I don't know if everyone really thinks this through, but an invasion of a major island nation is, these things have been I mean, they have happened in the past. You know, Rome invaded Britannia, or what became known as Britannia, and became the westernmost province of the empire. But it also cost the Romans 11. I mean, they had to maintain 10, 10 legions uh, in Britannia for centuries to maintain order after that. And that was the old world. And that's the ancient world. Uh, if you look at the Nazis never completed an invasion, even though they were looking at it and, and they were strategizing for it of the UK because that was considered very difficult to do. And they're right across the English Channel. Uh, and if you look at um, Japan, the United States concluded towards the end of the Second World War that it was going to cost too much in material and lives to invade Japan because the Japanese were going to be defending their homeland for the first time in centuries and they were going to dig in and it was going to cost a lot of lives on both sides. And it was going to be, it was doable, but it was just, it was going to be probably a disaster in certain areas. That's why they opted for the atomic bomb and using technology. So, you know, I mean, an invasion of a uh, power like Taiwan, which main, has a lot of our military backing, much like the Ukraine does now, but even more so. They've been preparing for this for decades. Uh, they're regimented to it. They're ready for it. And we they don't, I mean, the Chinese are going to be crippled by the amount of sanctions from the West immediately, which their economy is dependent on our market for their, to prop them up. So I don't know what invading, if, you know, if the CCP ever listens to this, I don't know what invading Taiwan's really going to get them. I mean, it's it's just, and then you're going to end up with, a, if you do win, whatever that amounts to, try doing urban warfare. The United States earned learned quite quickly that invading Iraq and fighting an, an urban desert war wasn't really a prudent idea. Uh, try doing an urban war on an island. You're essentially uh, island hopping. And, you know, I mean, yeah, good luck with that. I mean, that, that's, you're, you're just going to, whatever. And then what do you get out of it? A, a burned out cinder if you flatten it at the end of the, I don't know what you proved. So it's really not a, I, I think they're going to, that's why they never really do it. But could it happen? Sure. Yeah. I mean, this, with this administration and their lack of foreign policy, anything's possible. If Trump was president, I'd say to you, I'd take big odds against it. They'd never invade. I'd never be afraid of it. By now, Trump would have three or four carrier groups stationed uh, around uh, um, uh, right off the coast of Taiwan and South Korea. Look, there's another way of dealing with the Chinese. All you have to do is threaten to give the Japanese and give um, uh, Japanese permission to develop nuclear weapons and give the South Koreans nuclear weapons. That'll end it real quick because, uh, you know, you, you'll basically get them to back down. I mean, they're not going to want that. Um, you know, and but again, we don't have Trump as president. We have Biden. Unfortunately. Yeah. Hey, Tara, I see you have your hand up. If you do have a question, just drop it in the room. Um, just to let you know. Unless that was a mistake that you put it up there. Um, all right. What do you think of Bill Barr and what he said about Trump most likely going to lose 2024? Bill Barr is a joke. 
<laughs> it's just like Bill Barr is just a, it's a jealous individual. He's not, he just can't keep running it. He has to always run his mouth. Um, I don't. I think he personally doesn't like Donald Trump, probably because of Donald Trump probably rubbed him the wrong way, and and I think that Bill Barr is just part of the old establishment, quote unquote. And so you know they they again Trump didn't get along with him, and Trump. Here's the thing: Trump picked terrible attorney attorneys generals. So you know I I yeah he's Bill Barr whatever. I, I don't really care about what what he says. He, he makes no difference to me. Bill Barr, he's yeah. irrelevant. He is relevant. How optimistic are you about Georgia in 2024, considering I'm the 2020 optimistic. history there? I, I'm actually more optimistic about Georgia than I am about Arizona and Nevada. Uh, Arizona, I would have to say, if you're going to put it on a tier of my optimism, I'd start with Virginia and Georgia. Then I would go to Nevada. Then I would end with Arizona. That's really? that's yeah, that's how I view it. I think Arizona is 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 just is one of those states that is trending to the left. I think Nevada is starting to trend back to the right. And I think uh, Virginia is definitely trending back to the right. I think Georgia is a right wing state. I think that the amount of corruption tied in with the establishment control. So that's the problem in Georgia. In Georgia, you have um, essentially you're if you're not part of the old you know, boys club, if you would, if I can put it like that. Uh, you're one of the country club Republicans. You're never going to get elected there. So, you know, you need to be a part of the Republican establishment if you want to have any shot in Georgia. And the way you can fix that is by uh, making an alliance with the Georgia establishment because they have their own machine there. And look at the, the proof is Governor Kemp who won in a landslide. No one yeah. argued. No one no one argued that he didn't fairly win that election. I didn't hear anybody say that. I mean, unless I missed it. And Kemp won in a landslide. Uh, and and uh, and you know, it, it's uh, you you don't you know you want to work with them. I think the Secretary of State is a, is a terrible individual. I don't like it. But you have to make you know it's it's what you're dealing with. You just have to make you have to make you know you have to just do as best as you can with the hand you're dealt. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you, even with like how the Senate race turned out over there, I mean, you you still think that it's because of what happened with Kemp, it's good enough to carry the state? Yeah, I think if you it, look, uh, I think that Trump, uh, someone like Donald Trump would probably always run behind Kemp uh, as far as the numbers. He'll never get the numbers that Kemp got. Uh, but for that matter, neither will I don't think Ron DeSantis will either if he was the nominee. He'll yeah. do maybe he. Maybe he'd do a little better theoretically in Georgia, but it would still be a very tight race because, you know, Kemp just has a machine and he has an in there and he's got friends. And on top of it, he is very popular with much of the, the majority of the Republican voters there. We have to keep that in mind. So, right. you know, Walker... Walker kind of like undermined his own campaign. Uh, he had a lot of scandals that all of a sudden broke out, you know, and he wasn't well vetted. And I think he, w he began in a hole and he had to kind of dig himself out of it. And then when he was looking like he was going to pull it off at the end, he uh, he just came up short. And, uh, you know, but. I'm not going to, I don't want to relitigate the past. I don't do that. I look forward and I'm looking at it and I'm, con I'm, I'm confident. I'm not just, I'm not super confident, but I'm confident it's possible. Uh, it, but let me tell you, it has to happen because like I said, if you don't win Georgia and you don't win Virginia, you don't flip Virginia, your, your path is really narrowed here. Yeah. So you know, you've got to start, you've got to start with those states. You've got to start uh, targeting those states politically. So, I mean, is like as far as the cheating, let's just say, do you so do you think it's going to be difficult for Trump to overcome that in both the general and the primary? Well, I'm not going to go into all that. But um, the thing is that you, what you need to do is you need to get out the vote. So that means you need to register a lot of Republicans uh, in and you need to register them big time. So you get, everybody should be working for the local Republican chapters in all their states to get people registered for Republican Party. You see Scott Pressler was talking about this last week uh, that he's pivoting right off the right out of uh, out of Wisconsin. He's pivoting in, in Pennsylvania. And I think that is extremely important. I mean, sure, if we can flip Pennsylvania back, then. 
then all of this conversation about, let's say, Georgia becomes kind of a moot issue. Uh, yeah. It's just gravy. Um, you need to, so you need to get out the vote. You need to, where it's legal, ballot harvest. You need to uh, get Republicans involved where it's legal with ballot curing. Uh, that was something that, that cost Republicans in 2022 in November um, uh, in Arizona because the curing process started for Democrats. The Republicans were slow to start their ballot curing. So you, all of those things need to start happening. Plus, Republicans, and, and this is going to be hated by some people out there, but Republicans need to start embracing uh, early voting because even Trump's advocated for it. It's because Democrats have been, are, you know, you can't go into an election on election day and vote one day out of the, uh, you know, and you can't, in other words, you can't win an election when Democrats have been voting for 20 to 30 days and you're voting one day. I mean, it's just not everybody's going to show up on election day and vote. Then once you get into office and you, ch you can change the system back to the way it was. But these are, the, again, these are the cards we've been dealt and we have to operate. We have to outplay them at their own game. So, Francisco, Francisco, did we address your nerves over there? <laughs> Francisco stresses over things that he believes he can impact but doesn't know how to. For example, of harvesting, curing, geotargeted drop boxes, etc. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I, I think I addressed that just now. Yeah. Kind of like the along the lines of what you just yeah. said, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any updates on the Cary Lake legal proceedings in Arizona? Have no updates on it. Uh, that is still being adjudicated by the courts. Okay, and let's talk about World War Three. Do you think we're going to be dragged into one before we remove Biden from office? Or foreign uh, affairs get worse by the day? Yeah, it's a distinct possibility. And that's something for me to say that. Um, it's a distinct possibility. We could be heading in that direction. Um, so, you know, it's up in the air, but I, I think that that's a possibility. Uh, where I, I mean, there it was one major place, and that's the the Ukraine, because it seems like everybody's just uh, hell bent on having like World War One break out all over again in the same part of the world where it end, would have started the last time, and that was uh, you know over a hundred years ago. I think it's a it's just a stupid conflict, and I can't stand you know I don't like waste, and that's what you have there sheer waste, uh, you know, and I, I so I would like to see that part of the world. Um, straighten things out. Okay, so we only have a couple more questions left, but I think we need to tell people about your upcoming history seminar at the end of this month. Yes. All right. So Samurai versus Knight, you guys need to actually sign up for this one. It is absolutely great. This is my favorite seminar. I love doing it. I love the fact that I, I just love the topic. I do it every year. I've been I've been doing this for years now. I've been teaching this subject at this time of year. It's a tradition. I always do it. And uh, you definitely want to sign up for Samurai versus Night. It's April 27th to the 29th, I think it is. And at 7 p.m. Eastern time, it's a three-day yeah. seminar. It's a super seminar. It's a history seminar. Join me in discussing basically brutal medieval battle between two very disparate and at the same time similar cultures, uh, medieval Japanese samurai and, of course, the European knights and knighthood. And we're going to be talking about the codes of Bushido and chivalry. We'll be talking about um, the weaponry, a whole day basically on weapons and combat. And um, if you like martial arts, you'll definitely, this is the subject for you. If you like weapons and, and you like, you know, just this whole period of time, definitely is the seminar for you. We'll be talking about the culture. And this is a real immersion. It's a very audio visual kind of immersion in in history. And that's how I do my seminars. It's it's how can I put it? It's sort of like an interactive documentary, my history seminars. And it's a special occasion. So if you're interested in, in doing it, by the way, we also offer certificates uh, to students, uh, which has been very popular with the last seminar I did. Um, right. Students can, yeah, yeah right. I mean, sim sim students can actually uh, get certificates of attendance, which they may, depending on their state laws and the school they're at, submit for extra credit in history or social studies. So if you want your kid to attend, um, contact any of the angels or the warriors. Uh, you can even, of course, you can include this in your email to Roxy, Roxy Balboa, number one at gmail.com, or you can message her at Roxy 
underscore Balboa, but you can also contact any of the other, uh, my, any of my other assistants and, uh, they can get you hooked up with this. So I know you've, you've been to the seminar like four times, right? Rocks, <laughs> I've been doing a couple. I've been doing it a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> it's like night one of like the first year that you that okay. you taught it. But okay, I've been there ever um, since. Oh no, that's 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 inexcusable. I don't know. I would have given you an F right there. You know, I'd have flunked yeah. you right there for not being there. Attendance. Well, you know, you know I, ma- I made it up the last two years, so you know. Well, I you know, I paid my dues. You, you have, that's true. No, you know, it, and, and something that people don't know, I, I teach Socratically, so my seminars aren't lectures. They're, we, we go right. back and forth, and so pe- you can stop and we can engage and we get into debates. Sometimes I get into heated debates with some people that are attending. So even if you don't like history, sign up for Samurai versus Night. I guarantee you're going to like it. Try it out. Um, you'll absolutely love it. It's a great, great conversation. And we talk about, like, everything there. Yeah. You know, I remember last year, we had one of President Trump's lawyers actually attend. Yes. And yes, we did, which was kind of cool. And he wrote out a really nice review. It, yeah. The review he wrote was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful review. But um, we were sitting there, and I think it was night one or night two, and the decision about Roe v. Wade was leaked, wasn't it? I think that was leaked like day one or something of the encore. I think it was the encore. I don't remember exactly anymore, but it was, I remember we were sitting there and it was leaked and we stopped the seminar to talk about it for like 40 minutes about what the impact's going to be in the election. So you never know what's going to happen at one of my seminars. It's, it's this, it's like we're sitting there and live and all of a sudden, all of a sudden somebody goes, Hey Max, World War III is starting right now. I was just going to say that. (laughs) World War III is going to break out during this year's samurai. Oh, my goodness. There's been a nuclear strike somewhere in Europe. Oh, my gosh. It's the end of the world. Okay. Well, everybody relax. Breathe. Max is here. We'll we'll get through this. (laughs) We'll get through this. Don't worry about it. You know, you know, and all of a sudden I'm going on oxygen on my side. I mute my, my mic and I'm, you know, I'm just like scared to death. No, I'm not. So it's We're like, Max, where'd you right go, now. Max? It's like, everything's fine. I come back sounding like Darth Vader, you know, <laughs> you know, so it's like, I am your father. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah it's like no, but I'm serious. It's exercises. really it's it's really it's true it's 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 true it's true so anyways oh i got i got a message here from from a friend of mine uh who's embedded uh hold on a second here let me see this looks good i just want to share it with everybody let's see you never know what's going to happen here okay it's just a poll but it's a new um it's a new poll that just came out of florida republican primary trump 43 desantis 35 uh ram swarmy uh ram swami is four percent and i can't read the rest of haley's three actually and so uh one on a two-way race it's trump 47 desantis 32 not much of a change with a lot of undecideds uh the the important thing there is uh florida i think is the fourth or fifth state to vote and it's a state that desantis has to win in the primary it's not happening if he can't carry his own state it, it has no chance so I backed, I told you guys this, I'm saying this to everybody, the primary is all over now. I mean, now it's just auditioning for vice president. So you can thank the Democrats for that. So, mm-hmm. um, and again, I want to make it clear because I know a lot of DeSantis supporters follow me and I like DeSantis. I would vote for DeSantis if he was the, if he's the Republican nominee, I'm going to pull the, whoever is the Republican nominee, I'm going to vote for, and I'm going to do whatever I can to get them elected. So you know, make no mistake about that. But I'm not taking my red hat off, my MAGA hat off. So that ain't happening. So yeah. you know. So. Go ahead. No, I mean, I uh, that's that's great that we got a uh, little poll update in the middle of this. Yeah. So that that's imp- that's important. Uh, that's just further bolstering Trump's kind of like securing Trump's position as as the nominee for the mm. for the third time, unless he decides. Not to, you know, if he just decides I'm not going to do it, which I doubt if he decides to pull out, he's not going to do that. So, well, you dropped a, um, you dropped an interesting thing on forever on your breakdown in the Biden crime family. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, well, I'm talking a lot about this on premium and I did drop, uh, some of the links to the articles. If you're a premium member or a member of, uh, I think if you're a member of Max Tracks as well, depends on the article. Max Tracks, of course, <laughs> duh, Max Tracks. So if you guys don't want to, if you don't, if, if you prefer, you can sign up a la carte if you would for Max Tracks. You get it for free as a member of premium, but we have hundreds of people that are members of Max Tracks, which is my newsletter, which goes out 
pretty regularly. Um, it, it, they're works of art. I take a lot of time writing all the articles in there. So if you'd like to become a member of Max Tracks, you can. And again, uh, contact Roxy. Uh, and, and you can contact any of my assistants and they'll point you in the right direction. But um, so as far as the Biden crime family, I'm doing a series of articles on that. And it's very interesting. And I'll just briefly, briefly say this, that what you have here, according to the House Oversight Committee, uh, they announced the GOP House Oversight Committee, which is one of the probably the most important committee in the U.S. House. And they start they, they announced a few weeks ago that they have whistleblowers who have described the family as essentially this. There is a bunch of I, I, I'll have to just say it, dummy corporations that they set up that the, that the Biden family has set up and. They are controlled by various family members. Um, I don't know. I think there's something in the num- neighbor of like, neighborhood of like 12 or 15 different corporations that the Biden family has set up. They, have, they do business with associates who pay them large sums of money. When I, but it varies. They can be anywhere from like, you know, like 10000 20000 to 300000 to $1.3 million in a pop for services that are not really always clearly labeled. And according to the whistleblowers, the money then finds its way to individual uh, family. It's dispersed amongst the family members en masse. And then according to them, it finds its way into the president's pocket, into, into Biden's pocket um, in, in some form, whether that is a gift or whatnot, that has yet to be uncovered. You can only speculate. All of this was sort of like talked about, but then shoved on the side. And I kind of, I just, I just went right into this and started digging around, which is what I do again on premium. And I, cause I'm researching all these topics simultaneously. And the thing I, I question I have right off the bat is, and if any of this is making it to whether it's the family members or Biden, is it being reported to the IRS? Because that's a serious question right off the bat. But what's nice is that the GOP, and I'm going to have an article go up on this uh, later today on premium. And uh, and so if you want to, you can read it. If you join premium, again, contact Roxy. It's going up in a, in a couple of hours. But uh, the thing is, once you start digging in, you start ask, asking yourself that question, okay, is any of this really being even reported? And then it's and it's a sophisticated. This is like a it's like a it's like a maze because they're doing this to confuse people and to just it's like literally like an order like an order organized crime. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how it's set up. It, it's just to the money's coming into a corporation. It's going to corporate. It's going to the corporate head, and then from there it goes to family members, and then from those family members they convert it into goods, which then find their way into Biden's pocket or house or garage or what have you. So you have to start wondering is what's not being reported to to the IRS because you don't set up an elaborate system like that just to insulate Joe Biden from connections to foreign investors. And by the way, here's a caveat. The invest the associates that are donating the money are almost always foreign. And when I say that, a lot of them come from China. So this is how they've been doing business for several years. And so the House Oversight Committee has seriously, and I'm talking about this later today again, has seriously started looking into what, how many, a decade, if you would, a better part of a decade of Biden transactions between banks that are actually, according to them, committing wire fraud and money laundering which are two felonies. And of course, that would also bring in the Department of the Treasury. And they've exposed Democrat Senate, uh, uh, Democrat Senate, or they, the Republicans got their hands on this. The House Republicans got their hands on Democrat Senate. For, this is dated from like 2020. Um, sheets with the banks that are involved. And they've subpoenaed up to four banks and counting, there's actually, I've seen the, the names on the banks, there's actually about 16, 13 to 16 banks that they're investigating, big names 
uh, which everybody knows, and some names to some banks they've never even heard of. They've got this spread out, and these corporations are have accounts in all of these banks, and they're using small dollar. In some some cases, it's, it's small. It's not like I said. It's not you know, like all $1 million or $300,000, it may just be a few thousand dollars that they're moving around. And they've been doing this for a long time. It's a lot like a cartel. It's a lot like the the Sonola cartel, actually, how they started laundering money in the United States, how they continue to launder money in the United States uh, by by finding people to use small dollar amounts to purchase goods, which they then take and then they bring back to Mexico and they sell for pesos. And that's how they launder the money there. And I'll be talking about that in my next Renegade article, which is going to be part four of uh, a series I'm doing on illegal immigration. So again, guys, I do this is this is what we do on premium. I mean, I literally do this around the clock, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of research as well. But um, but that's the scandal. So this is a huge scandal. If this is if the House starts and they've got a key witness that they that they subpoenaed this morning as well, actually over the weekend that they're bringing in from China. He's a chief, worked for a Chinese energy company and he, he's donated millions to the Biden family and I think he's going to squeal. So um, they're, they're bringing him in. And if, if they can expose the bank's culpability in this, this is going to be the biggest scandal, I think, uh, in the history of Washington, in modern history of Washington, D.C., because it's spread out so wide uh, over so much. And in the, the heart of it is the Biden crime family, which is truly a- operates in the business wise, at least allegedly operates as a criminal enterprise. Is so it, that's big? What, it is big guys. It's really big. And I'm like, I'm not the only person talking on this. Of course, I know I'm, I suppose dad's talking about it too. And, and then of course there's uh, uh Breitbart had an article up on it this morning as well. So this is, but I don't know how much it gets in main, this, as far as mainstream press goes and how much people dig into it, but it's pretty, pretty, well, pretty probably interesting. Not. Because it's against yeah. Biden, right? So we're not going to hear yeah, too I mean, much about it on there. Eventually, yeah, exactly. Eventually, they're going to have to acknowledge it. But, you know, yeah, I agree with you on that. And this was the importance of getting the House, right? Uh, the, the House is the purse strings. I mean, they are huge. So it's very important. It's very important to control the House of Representatives because look at what we're doing. And by the way, if, if there's like money laundering and all that kind of stuff, at the very least, you'll be able to put family members away in jail and at the very most you can bring impeachment charges and criminal charges up against joe biden and so mm-hmm. it'll make what trump's going through look like nothing which it is it might be, it's a big nothing anyway so yeah i mean yeah. this is this is this is good stuff so we're gonna and and max is posting on this regularly now he just started his series on it too like he just said so lots of good stuff to come over there on premium regarding this which is what you wanted this is the stuff that you want to be in the know about not the garbage that's going on out there this is the important stuff it really is i mean i i don't get tied up with every little like people were going what happened with melania you know this that and the other one like she just probably was taking a break i mean you know don't get tied up on all that kind of nonsense you know what i mean she's not going anywhere you know, so it's like, it's like, this is, and now it's like, well, this you know, long. she ain't going anywhere now. She's not going anywhere. No, she just, she's, it's, it, every, all's good. All's good at Mara Largo. So, you know, everything's fine. Um, and you just have to deal with these. Uh, and I have been, we'll be talking about the, the trial if they're, if, whenever it ends up being a trial. I think this whole case is going to fall apart with the Manhattan DA. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, you know, the Georgia, when Georgia comes in and the DOJ, if that happens, um, the obstruction of justice charges that may come against President Trump. So we'll be covering all of that. I mean, I, and I'll just say briefly to everybody, as far as the scandal goes uh, with Trump, it's not a scandal, but the Manhattan DA, it's just a big joke. I talked about it in my last Max Bites. Go back and listen to it. You can just scroll back one um, video earlier. But um, there's there's nothing... There's there's nothing really there, and I'll, and I'll talk about this in another Max Bites again. But there's there's nothing really there that is going to stick. I mean, I don't believe the fel- I don't think the felony charge is going to work. I think that's going to collapse first, even in the original court. I think it's a bridge too far. And if they don't have the felony charge, then it's a misdemeanor, and there's a statute of limitations of two years on the misdemeanor that expired and. and it, it, at the latest, it expired spring of 2020. So this thing's over with. It is it, this this case is going to collapse. Bragg's case is going to collapse. Don't even sweat it, guys. 
you think part of it is that they're they're trying to talk this up, the, you know, the case with Trump to kind of hide what's going on with Biden? Yeah, I think that um, the the case with with Trump is just a, a smokescreen because of the the the, the, the Mac. I, yeah, I mean, there's a huge scandal that's brewing on, uh, that's there for the Biden. On top of it, I think they're also trying to cover up all his uh, political and, or do, I should say, domestic and foreign failures. Um, look, you know, I mean, who wants to look at what's going on in Europe and and you know and, and talk about that? I mean, it's it, everything that's going on there is a direct result of the change of policies in the administration, the change of administration in the last two years. I mean, that's why. So. The direction of this country yeah yeah all right well that wraps up our questions for today i mean we've been going over an hour so thank you everybody for joining us for our live megabytes today and again like max said we're running a special for this month for only 12 dollars your first month you can get become part of premium and get full access to max's articles his analysis the garage which is a chat full of like-minded patriots his his newsletter, his Magabytes, uh, discount on his upcoming merch, um, which, by the way, we're in the process of, you know, putting some awesome stuff out there. It's going to be really oh, cool. We've got some really good stuff coming. I'm have, we're having so much fun with that. That's actually the website is is going to be big. It's going to be huge. But I mean, that part of it's going to have like its own life. And that's 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 we did like a little short, brief intro the other day. But, you know, I mean, it's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a very small, very soft launch. But man, this is, is, yeah, you guys are going to like, you're going to like what's coming, coming down the pipe. So that's, that's, that's huge. That's, that's, yeah. that's huge. And and thank yeah. you for all, thank you for everybody reaching out about that. So that was a lot. That was really cool. So, yeah. you know, we've got, we've got it. So it's coming. So. Yeah, lots of good stuff and discounts on seminars like his uh, yep. history seminar coming up, which is awesome. Three yep. days of discussing the most coolest topic ever. And if you're into martial arts, if your children are into martial arts, you got to get them in the seminar because I mean, the sound effects, the visual effects that Max does with this, it's, it's pretty awesome. You're basically like sitting through a movie. So it's, um, it's really interesting. And if you have kids that are into martial arts, then get them in there. You'll definitely enjoy it. So definitely sign up for that. Reach out to Roxy. And anyways, um, without further ado, I will bid you all a wonderful rest of your week and a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you in the garage. And I hope everybody uh, I hope everybody has as peaceful and happy a day as they possibly can and uh, be well. Thank you again for joining for joining us today. And this was and this is Magabytes, my premium podcast. And I am joined again by the redoubtable Roxy Bell. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Hey, I gotta bring. I'm bringing these words back. Are you kidding me? I mean, I know. Hey, I know. I, I mean, I mean, you know me. I like to work with a big vocabulary. So it's like, come on, let's say this. Let's resurrect is that your these word, words. Is that your word of a day on your calendar? I, there you is go. The my word. word of the, okay, the word not really, but I'll, I'll make it. The word of the day is redoubtable. Everybody, go look it up and start using it. The redoubtable. So the redoubtable. Put my face next to the word. There you go. Just put yeah. Just pin pin Roxy's face there. So, anyways, guys, God bless you. Just take care. Thanks again, Rox, for everything. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, it was a blast as always. And thanks everybody for joining us and for submitting your questions. We uh, we love having you guys. You guys are great. Take care, and we'll be talking again soon. Ciao now. Ciao.